everyone. This is Juan speaking, and I'm the developer of Questlog. The Questlog is a control library in C++. Technology has been great for the past 20 years, to the point that I can safely assume that you have a mobile phone. You probably prepare rice in a rice cooker. Surely you have prepared to take a lift over taking the stairs. And hopefully you have back from your place at least once this year. Moreover, you have surely played video games in your lifetime. Perhaps you have done your own laundry. And you know what a digital camera is, even if it is bundled in your phone. And probably you like to take long, perfectly hot showers as much as I do. Perhaps you have heard of Google Shepherds with the self-driving car. And definitely you have watched tons of movies and being in New Zealand, it is compulsory to have watched a lot of them. Also, you should know that most of them, not all of them, use Fastlogic control in one way or another. There are over 50,000 patents involving Fastlogic control. Over $10 billion in product sales using Fastlogic control. And I'm only talking about a single product, which is the drop tracking unit. Now, the profits of the industry using Fastlogic control are estimated in billions of dollars. And the whole idea of Fastlogic control started like 50 years ago or so. And can you possibly believe that state-of-the-art Fastlogic control libraries have some limitations even nowadays? Take for example MATLAB and its Fastlogic toolbox. The last time I checked, you have to pay several thousands of dollars for both of them, as they are sold separately. And on top of that, you have to put up with one of the most horrible programming languages I've seen ever in my life. For Cave and its fast logic toolkit, unfortunately they are doing the best they can to manage MATLAB, but they're doing so with an open source CTO license, which might prove restrictive for a closed source MATLAB toolkit. The people from Gay Fast Logic have made some unfortunate design choices along the way, and as for the other libraries, I have not seen one that is worth sticking to. So I hope you can see why I started Fastlog in the first place. Uh, to be a free and open source project with a commercial friendly license, I like to think that I have made mostly personal design choices. It has more features than all the libraries available up to date combined. It is very easy to use, and it is available for the major platforms. The overall goal of this tutorial is to present an introduction to Fastlogic control. Specifically, I will go over the design and operation of Fastlogic control, I will present some examples, and lastly, I will describe Fastlog. So what's a Fastlogic controller? Basically, it consists of a set of inputs that activate a set of rules, that trigger a set of actions that generate a set of outputs. As simple as that. A classical example in fast logic control is that of how much food you deliver at a restaurant based on the quality of the food that you have. To model this, you have a fast logic controller that takes as an input the quality of the service, it generates the hit of exactly how much food you're going to deliver based on a set of rules that I just explained then, which I showed you before from the Greek term Ichis, which means the set of the phrase that I just explained before. Having said that, the quality of service is a linguistic variable, the French goes between 0 and 10, and it is divided in three overlapping terms, namely fair, good, and great. Thus, if you rank the quality of service at 2.5, the term associated to that is the fair. The tip is another linguistic variable. The French goes between 0 and 25, which is a percentage for any other unit that you expect, and it is divided in three overlapping terms, namely fit, average, and good. And more interestingly, if the fit value is 17.5, the terms associated to that is average and great, but it is not cheap. Now, these are linguistic variables with strict checks because 
for every possible value, the temperance of shaded is a degree either 1 or 0. That is, either the term is associated or it is not. For example, we have seen that for surveys of 2.4, uh, for surveys of 2.5, the term associated is false, but it is not good nor great. And for a good value of 17.5, it is average in general, but it is not good. Now, if we add another dimension, and we call it membership number, then we can better define the linguistic variables that different degrees of certainty that goes between 0 and 1. Thus, for example, for a value for, for, for an x value of 2.5, we now say that the associated term is 4 with certainty 1.0. Likewise, we define the membership function for the test, and to make it more interesting, consider a value of y equals to 17.5, which should be around this place, then we say that the associated term is 0 0.2 average, which should be around here, and 0 0.8 general, which should be around there. These are linguistic variables with fuzzy threads which allow to represent much more information using membership functions with values that are between 0 and 1. The design of a pathology controller consists then on modeling the inputs and outputs of linguistic variables and writing a set of rules that will provide the desired behavior. As such, the operation of, a, of this fuzzy threaded controller will be as follows. So for a for the four surveys, the six points we keep, but as the surveys improve, we see that the fifth also gets more certain. It is important to understand the underlying operation of pathology controllers, which is, it is at the very core of pharmacy. So, the moment that you rank the quality of the surveys, the pathology controller will undergo three stages. Um, falsification, inference, specification, and finally we will obtain the output, which should be the fifth. The first stage is falsification, and it basically converts the test value into a fuzzy thread. You should know already how to do this, so for example, we have the input variable survey, and specification is basically defining the fuzzy thread. So for a value of 1.0, for a ranking of 1.0, we say that the associated term is 4 with a degree of 0 0.4. For a value of 2.5, we say it is 1.04. For 7.0, and around here, it is 0 0.2 good and 0 0.8 great. So we define the the fuzzy thread as the sum of the membership functions for value x over the label y. The next step is inference, which activates the rule to generate fuzzy outputs. So having the fuzzy inputs from the previous stage, we work first on activating the antecedent, then we modify the consequence of each rule, and finally we accumulate the whole thing together to obtain a fuzzy output. The first step is the activation of the antecedent, and considering the example that we have worked so far, uh, taking an input value of 2.5 for a survey, uh, we assign the values from the membership function to each of the corresponding propositions, and ultimately we will have an activation degree for each antecedent. Now, considering the more interesting case of an input value of 7.0 for the quality of surveys, we assign uh, 0 0.2 weight to the proposition surveys is poor, 0 0.2 to the proposition surveys is good, and 0 0.8 to the proposition surveys is bad. The next step is the modification of the consequence. So, using the activation degrees we have computed before, we multiply them with the linguistic
this could change the use of those antigens using an activation of the radar. This is some sort of basic interpretation, if you will, but it is formally known as a tumor. For example, if we multiply uh, 1.0 with the term, the linguistic term chief, we get the linguistic term structure of the radar. Whereas if we multiply 0, 0.0 times average, we get nothing, and 0 0.0 times cumulus, we get more than nothing. Now, if we make it more interesting, the, say the multiplication of 0 0.0 chief, 0 0.2 times average, and 0 0.3 times cumulus, we will get the following, provided that we define the Fuzzy multiplication of the activation operator in this case as the minimum between any two possible values. So we say 0 0.0 times chief, the minimum will be 0 all throughout. Now, 0 0.2 times average will be the minimum as soon as we reach 0 0.2, where it becomes the new minimum. It goes all the way until it goes down. And lastly, 0 0.8 times cumulus using the minimum of uh, an activation operator, we will get every possible value until we reach 0 0.8, and then we get the address of y. Now, if we define the fuzzy, the fuzzy multiplication or the activation operator in this case as the proper multiplication as we know, as we know it, uh, then what we're doing is basically we are scaling the membership function uh, to, the, to the activation degree. So 0 0.0 chief will be still 0. 0 0.2 average, you see that we have scaled our linguistic term to 0 0.2. And likewise, we have scaled the linguistic term generous to 0 0.8. The last step is the accumulation of the consequence. So we're going to sum up everything and considering the more interesting case for a, a, a quality of service rank of 7.0, then the first step we have to perform is the activation of the interpreter, which we already got. Then we use those activation degrees to multiply them with the linguistic terms of the consequence. And now what we want to do is we want to accumulate all together. And we're going to do this by using some sort of fuzzy sum, if you will. Uh, in this case, we name it accumulation operator, which is, uh, which is formally known as, a, as an S name, or some other people may argue that it's called a PICO name. Now, recall the examples that we went through before, the multiplication of the consequence. What, want, what we want to do is to sum each of these terms. So let's start with the left hand side. And we're going to define the fuzzy sum or the accumulation operator as the maximum between any two values. So look at the shape we, we have. And it's, it's sort of uh, choosing the maximum between any two possible values of this one. So the maximum will be this one and the maximum will be this one until we get the rest of it. Now, if the other case that we can also do is define the accumulation operator as a proper sum, as we know it, one plus one equals two. So in this case, we will have the sum between this one is zero, zero plus this one will give me this one. And then here, we sum these values with these values, which will give us some sort of continuation here as well. This is the end of the inference phase. And now the question is, what do we do with these shapes, which are actually fuzzy numbers? How do we make sense out of them? And the answer to that lies in the deprecification stage. The deprecification stage converts fuzzy outputs into crisp values. And a typical example is the same curve, which integrates over the, over the fuzzy number, uh, computes the same curve, and returns the x coordinate of the same curve. Other examples are the maxima decrucifier, which can return the smallest, 
the mean or the largest uh, x value from the maximum member population. And after the decontification, we have the output values of our fuzzy logic control. So let's take a look at some examples. This is QT fuzz light, and the example that I'm going to show you is a simple demo. So the simple demo is a fuzzy logic controller who automatically dims the power of a light bulb based on the amount of ambient light that there is. So if the ambient is dark, we want the power of the light bulb to be high, if it is medium and the power is medium, and if the ambient is bright enough, then we want the power to be at the low. So we model the input, vi the input variables using simple triangles, and they go between 0 and 1. And you can think of those as the, the values that you obtain from a light sample. Now the power of the bulb, of the light bulb, is go is modeled again to using triangles, and it goes between zero and one. Now, if we go to the control tab, then we, we can actually play with the fuzzy logic controller. So, as I move the slider, you can see the different rules activating to different degrees as the ambient becomes darker. Now, these activation degrees are assigned as the strength and also as in colors of different shades of green. And on the side of the, uh, of the power, of the output variable, you can see this green shade is the accumulation of the outputs that we have defined before. And, the, uh, and this line is the decrucify, is the, the result of the decrucify which is given by the same shade and it follows the same filter that we did in the first case. So you can see how it all works together. Now, another way of viewing this is to as an output view. So we can actually see the, the changes in just from the same time based on the, on the input uh, on the input The other example I wanted to show you is the investment portfolio for mass bulbs. Now in this case there are two input variables, one is age, which is defined by two ranges between young and old, which is one of the ranges between 20 and 100 years old, and risk defined by two ranges between low and high, between zero and one. Now the output variable is a percentage in stock is defined as three ranges between, so I'm going to go to zero. Now, I'm not sure much of, of what this fuzzy logic controller does, but based on the rules, you can get an idea. So if you're young and you, are, you take a high risk, then the percentage in stock should be at zero. Now, otherwise, if you're old and your risk is rather low, the percentage of stock should be at zero. Now this reminds me, uh, these rules remind me that another use of fuzzy logic controllers is in the bank, in, in banking and the insurance companies. So where banks would decide how much money would they loan you uh, based on different variables, and uh, an insurance company would decide how much the cost of your insurance policy would be based on other variables and the risk of stock and so on. Now, the reason why I like this uh, fuzzy logic controller is because it introduces the concept of head risk. So it's not extremely, and you have some others that will help you feel more more flexible and safe. The other aspect is this with 0 0.5. 0 0.5 uh, establish, determines the weight of the rule importance of the rule. So in this case, this rule, these two rules will have uh, have the importance of, of head risk. Another important thing to mention here is the use of the P norm, F norm, and the activation operator, which we have defined before. The activation operator, you already know it. 
but Pinon's anatomy in this case is that Pinon is for the connect uh, it defines the operation of the connective and and the S non defines that of the connective or. Uh, in fuzzy light you are currently enforced to as a test in 3.1 you are enforced to, to, to select either to select both of them the Pinon and the S non even if you do not have a connector in the rule. However, that will change in version 4. Now, going to the control tab, we can uh, we can play with the fuzzy light controller again and see how, how it operates and how the different rules activate and how the accumulation of the output happens. But another way to, of seeing this is using the surface 2D. If we create a map of the output value of the percentage and step based on the input or on the different possible values for the percentage and step. So in this case we generate the map and we can see the that as the age is older and the person with the risk as the risk is smaller, you get a more yellowish output value, a smaller map. Um, red all the way. Uh, you can also remove the controls or add more controls as you please and you can of course uh, paste that in as well. Now lastly I wanted to tell you that you can uh, create your fuzzy logic controller from scratch using the using the user interface using CP Fuzzy Light and you can also export them to C++ to the current C++ if so that can be a problem moreover you can export it to Fuzzy Light to the Fuzzy Control language or the Fuzzy Light system itself so now we just wait a minute so going back to the presentation uh, Fuzzy Light is a library. You can build it as a dynamic library using uh, many of the DirectX and Mac that style in Lib or in Windows that DLS. You can also build it as a static library. And QT Fuzzy Light is just a user interface that links to Fuzzy Light. Uh, the main features of Fuzzy Light are Nandani. Uh, topology genome to the network fuzzy logic controllers. The Mandani controllers are the one that I have explained in this tutorial and the others are you can read the paper if you choose to so I'll explain them. Uh, fuzzy Light has over 17 linguistic frames, 13 fuzzy logic operators in order to fuzzy Spanish pronunciation that is the pinon and the s non, 7 diffusifiers, six types of headwords that you that I have told you before, including very, somewhat, and not. You can import and export using uh, different formats and also export to Fuzzy Light C++. And you can easily export and incorporate new content to Fuzzy Light. This is the list of linguistic terms that are available in Fuzzy Light, but there are also some others that, that allow you to combine different linguistic terms if you need to. And lastly, this is the abstract model of, of Fuzzy Light. So we have a, an engine that is the controller itself. So you have the, a, a vector of input variables, a vector of output variables, a vector of rule blocks, and a vector of headwords. So the, uh, every time you set the value for input variable, you search for set, and then you should you, that gets computed. The input variables have a, an, an, an input uh, value that is the type var that can be defined as a float or as a bubble, and a list of functions, a vector set. Now the rule block contains the rules for the fuzzy logic controller. The pinon and s are these are going to change in version 4, 
the theorem defines the, the conjunction uh, that is the beyond connector, and the S norm defines the OR connector. This is the activation operator, and the FIRE rule uh, triggers all the instant process together with the, yeah, all the instant process. Lastly, the, the, the output variables of, of alpha hat bar vector of strength and accumulated output, which we have defined before, is the fusifier and the wrapper called the fusify, which connects to the fusifier, the fusify uh, the output and the accumulated output. Now, the co as conclusion from crystal work, well, we have found that pathologic controllers are very powerful alternatives to traditional control algorithms. They are very easy to design and operate and also to maintain over time. And there are several uh, algorithms between pathologic controllers uh, to improve their performance. However, you, it is important, very important to recognize when it is useful to utilize pathologic controllers. Because if you take a look at the example that we have shown so far, uh, we can easily model this behavior using a simple function uh, from the RAM frame. Now this function will be far more com uh, computationally cheaper than using a pathologic controller. As a future work, I expect to, to incorporate type 2 pathologic controllers, which uh, include uncertainty in the membership function, uh, develop the adaptive neural factory inference system, which includes neural network and factory systems, and the fuzzy thingy buffering algorithm. But there are still many more things to do. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have enough resources, please consider supporting Fuzzy Life with a donation. All the money goes strictly to the development of Fuzzy Life. And I am currently working on a Java version, which I expect to release early 2014. But your donation will make a much welcome difference. Thank you very much.